welcome to the first of five Thanksgiving STEM challenges. This is actually one of my favorite series because each challenge leads into the next in a way that lets you explore life in the 1600s through the eyes of the Wampanoag and or the Pilgrims. The first challenge is all about water transportation, which we'll get on with in just a moment. The second is about shelter building. The third is gathering food. The fourth is about agriculture, planting and harvesting food. And the final challenge is a little bit about what happens when people have met their needs for food and shelter. They have a little bit of time left over for recreation. Before we get started with our first challenge walkthrough, I've made some changes to the resources since they were first created, which is why I'm filming this new intro. I've designed these challenges to be used to explore the lives of the Wampanoag, the Pilgrims, or both. The first challenge in this series is Mini Mayflower or Mini Mission. In this challenge, students will build a boat built for capacity and or speed. Before we get too far into the details, let's take a second to look at the materials and the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. You can click on the title now to see the cycle explained. You're always welcome to change up the materials however you like. I just will recommend foil sheets for this one. Um, it is a little bit pricier to buy them in the pull-out food prep sheets than it is in the rolls, but it's a lot simpler to distribute even amounts to everything. And let me just caution you, don't give them too many materials on this or it will be very difficult to sink those ships. So each of these boats was made with just one foil sheet. If you have older students, you might wanna even just give them half of a foil sheet. So you're gonna need a little container for the boats to float in. Make sure that they're deep enough so that the boats will actually sink if they hit the bottom. So the problem with this one is it's not quite deep enough. Well, we'll see if this one sinks or not. But you can also use something with a little bit more depth, something like this. Just hit the Dollar Tree. There's always a bunch of stuff you can use. So you're gonna want some uniform objects in order to test the capacity. Um, I suggest marbles uh, because they've got some good weight to them and you'll be surprised at how much these boats can hold. So you don't want to go with anything too light, like paper clips, you'll run out of paper clips for sure. So base 10 blocks, marbles, candies, pennies, that kind of thing. Students should place in one marble at a time so that it's easy for them to tell where the failure point was once it does sink. Now if you run out of objects, whatever your object is, before the boat sinks and you want to see how much the boat can take, you can start using non-uniform objects. But if you're gonna do that, you might wanna to try to have a scale on hand so you can get at least the total weight of what the boat withheld before it failed. Yeah, so this one didn't fail and I did run out of marble, so I would just keep adding, like I said, some other objects. If you wanna increase difficulty on this, you can add a speed criterion. So how fast can the boat actually travel? Now it's very difficult to do this if you don't have a stream table. Like this, if you take a look at it, I mean, my container is you know just barely larger than this boat. So you're gonna need a larger container if you're gonna to wanna to test for speed. One recommendation I do have is if you are going to test for both capacity and speed, do the speed test first, because what will happen is the capacity test, you're basically testing until the boat fails, and at that point, you won't be able necessarily to test the speed. Another thing you can do if you want to actually slow down the boats a little bit, because maybe you don't have a long enough stream table, is to go ahead and put some weight in. So ask every group to put in 10 marbles and that should slow it down a little bit. So with the speed test, one of the things I like to do is to label the start line, uh, the old world and the finish line, the new world. And the students are not allowed to actually touch the boat once it's in the water um, with their hands. Um, and I will nudge it into place. But in order to make the boat go, they would either need to use wind or waves um, I suppose there's a way to use maybe oars. I've just not seen anyone do that yet. Uh, but the students would probably, most likely, use a sail. You can decide whether or not you want to limit the members of the team who are allowed to participate in making the boat go however they've designed it to go. Another thing you could do to increase difficulty is ask each group to design two or more boats and then either require them not to use the same base material. So in this one, I used foil for the base. So in my second one, I wouldn't be allowed to use foil. I'd have to use something else that was provided in the materials. Another thing you can do, require that the base shapes be different. So these two could come from the same group because we have basically a canoe shape um, and we have a more of a rectangular prism. This is, although this is sort of close to a rectangle, you can see it's pinched at the end. For extensions on this one, uh, buoyancy, water displacement, Archimedes principle, 
and then energy transfer through uh, wind and waves. You have the basics, but if you want more than just the basics, check out the resource. This resource contains everything you need to guide your students through the mini Mayflower, mini Mishun STEM challenge, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest has been done for you. You'll get aligned next-gen science standards, links to my STEM challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and a materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find two versions of editable criteria and constraints lists so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student handouts, there are two versions, a four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find a math extension and process flow templates, as well as a speak, listen, draw oral communication activity. This resource is available individually and is part of the discounted Thanksgiving and Mega STEM Challenge bundles. Paperless versions for use with Google Slides are also available. Links can be found in the description below the video.